Oh baby, oh baby, oh baby, we about to get into this. Now this is gonna be a very special MFO episode because it's coming out of nowhere. You guys have no idea what is going on because guess what, it's random. Because today I wanted to talk about RNG. What's going on guys, it's your boy Cash, and today's video has a 90% chance to entertain you, a 10% chance to, nah, nah, fuck it, fuck it, 100% chance, 100% chance that you will love this video, and it's also, of course, 100% MFO. See, we're gonna be talking about, hold on, let me, this is, this is a professional video, this is some, let me, mm, mm, yeah, hold on, man, hold on, put the, mm, Mm. Ah, there we go. Yeah, 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 it's professional. Why we want to be professional today? Because we're talking about business. <laughs> Not really, but I wonder, I saw this video um, from YDCB and I really wanted to, to talk and share with you guys. I want to be able to do MFOs when I feel like it also. So this is one of the MFOs where uh, RNG played a heavy toll and it really made me think about the RNG in gameplay. Now this RNG in, uh, sometimes in progression, this RNG in a lot of stuff, especially in the mobile games, but this set of RNG, RNG in gameplay is actually something that exists in not mobile games as well. Uh, a really big big other one that exists right now is going to be like in pokemon I, I mentioned pokemon a lot is that there's a 70 cent percent chance to burn 80 percent chance to do this uh, 90 percent chance to do this they also have 100 percent chance to do stuff too but sometimes the accuracy of the move is lower so there's rng in pokemon a lot of people uh preach about it and stuff like that like oh my god this is so stupid i did this and he lucked out the only reason why he lucked is because of the crit crit is also a big component in a lot of games also in super smash brothers the character, I think his name was Warrior, if I'm not mistaken, he was able to randomly crit you if you got hit with a smash attack. So let's say all of a sudden, something that you're so used to doing 10 damage, doing like 30 or something like that, and that's really big in Smash. So it's not like this is something exclusive to gacha games, but I feel like we deal with it regularly because all the other games that I've mentioned outside of like Pokemon, kind of have it like embedded into the system as well. Like so, like Pokemon has it embedded in the system, gacha games have it embedded in the system. Other games usually don't have it that deep into their system. It's not really encased into it. So like this video that he just posted, I think it's his most recent video. Why I disappeared? <laughs> no, I didn't. So this video here is actually called Press F to Pay Respects. Now what happens in this video, I'm gonna have to explain it for people that obviously do not play Epic 7, that might not understand what, what happened in this video. I'm not really gonna play it in full, but I am going to click around and uh, show you guys some interesting stuff. So this is the draft. So if you guys don't know, in Epic 7, they currently have RTA, which is Real Time Arena. So that means that these people, uh, YDCB versus Samu Gamer, they're going to basically play against each other. They are actively going to be controlling the characters. It's not going to be their, I hope my team does good, uh, kind of thing. So this is a draft. So what happens is, I can even show you guys a little bit. Uh, this is what happens at the end of it, right? But I can show you guys as it develops, right? As you see, it's empty first, and then one of them will get first pick. So like, he picks this character, then he gets two, and he's gonna get two, then he's gonna get two, and he's gonna, like, it, it goes back and forth. I hope you guys understand. So like, it goes back and forth until they get five. They also were able to ban two individual characters. I should just biggie size it, right? Sorry. <laughs> they also get, oh no, but then I block YDCB, no. Um, they also get to ban two characters in general. So there's two characters in this match that will not have, not be able to see the light of day regardless. Everything is reactionary, right? So he picks this and you can then, he can then counter pick them if he wants to. This is where RNG kind of like is a really big thing where I really want to have the discussion of it. Uh, why does CB loses this fight? It, but the way that he loses it is uh, very controversial in his own comment section. This is why does he's bit be. God, you and your fucking acronyms. This is YDCB's video, right? So this is him showing his video and how he lost. For one, I always commend a person that can put up their losses because a lot of a lot of YouTubers know, we all know that if we just show ourselves winning all the time, it's, it's beneficial. But YDCB, one of my actual idols, I really respect and love this guy. He would always show his losses and he always made it about entertainment. It wasn't about winning all the time. And if you guys notice, I've got, I've, I've, 
tried to put that as much into my own humor, into my own YouTube, because it's a philosophy that I truly believe in. It, if you just show a bunch of wins, you're hiding something. So <laughs> I'm gonna biggie size it. Sorry, bro. Gotta, gotta. I gotta be on the screen. People like me too. On the left is what we would consider somewhat of a cleave team. Like he's looking to basically kill them with AOE. <laughs> he's going to buy the best way he can kill all his opponent's monsters or uh, heroes in this case within one turn. This one on the right is kind of like a counter team. He has units that are very bulky. Uh, this unit specifically here cannot die. He has to pretty much he has to be killed like twice. Martial artist Ken here is a unit that if he doesn't die and he gets crit, he retaliates and does a shit ton of damage if you do not kill him. So this character most likely is built somewhat bulky. Now, as you notice, I spoke about this one, this one. These are these are two tanks. This one's a should be somewhat bulky. This one can't die. Now, is this character right here, Celine? Celine actually has a very, 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 very unique ability. She's a brand new character, and this is about um, the dev team of Epic Seven trying to find ways to counter stuff that's really popular in the in the meta of their PvP, obviously. So this team comp right here is very hard to it's very hard to beat because if you don't have the speed, if you can't outspeed this team, you will lose to it. Like that's just that's just it. You're going to lose to it. So when it came down to the bands here, like they actually get another additional ban. So after they see the draft, it's still going to be a 4v4. So he, YDCB decides to ban out Martial Artist Ken because he knows that if his cleave doesn't work, if he tries to do his cleave and it doesn't work, this character will pretty much heal back to full and then he can't kill anything. And this character will literally, and I'm not kidding, will solo his team. You guys are pissed in Exos Heroes about a character? <laughs> Talked about Epic 7 people. Talk to my Epic 7 people about a character soloing your entire team if you make some mistakes. This character is definitely was doing an Epic 7. So this normally would work. YDCB would technically win this fight pretty hand over fist. These characters here can't really do anything, but he had to let Celine in because he could not let martial artist Ken in, right? So what happens, <laughs> I'll just play that out. I'll play that out so you guys can see what happens um, in this fight. And then I'll explain what Celine does because what, what Celine does here is ridiculous. Scenario, she hits Arbiter Vildred. Hopefully Ooh. I explain this. Yeah. Do you see what he's doing right here? This man is praying. He's praying the biggest cheese smile I've ever seen. You would have thought this man is about to have Christmas and it's definitely August. This man is like, please. Meanwhile, YDCB is <laughs> like, come on, man. Come on, man. I did everything correct and that's pretty much the the main discussion of this anyway that would be the best case for scenario. here we go pumps it up right, here's the intuition and oh, then boom that is the that best is, ideal time. oh my god he pushes up with each other she said and as you can see he's very excited so what happened there <laughs> Celine has, uh, like I said, she's a counter meta unit. So what happens with that is that Celine, when a, a non-support skill is used, so pretty much a buff skill, she will activate a skill and she will pretty much do that to it. The luck part of this is that obviously it was a one in four shot. It was a one in four shot. It, it could have hit auxiliary lots. It could have hit the A Vildred. It could have hit C Domino, but it hit the character that not only did he boost it, but it also hit the character that he needed pretty much to cleave out this team. Uh, Judge Kisei has a very strong, strong cleave, and also just to put even more context into it, his this uh, soul burn system that Epic Seven has also would have dramatically benefited this cleave. I it's almost like a hundred percent certain that if Judge Kisei lives there, if he would have sniped out any other character, especially if he would have sniped out a Vildred. With that being said, that's just RNG that's in this game and we all know that there's RNG in a lot of games. But now my issue that I'm bringing, and I know this is kind of long-winded, right? Is that uh, there are some people in the comment section, I'm not gonna try to point certain people out, but they were discrediting Samu Gamer. Even though, with a, in an RTA and a draft, right? You set up your best offense, you set up your in your best responses, right? Well, he technically picked two characters that YDCB had to worry about, that was concerned about, right? He With those two characters, YDCB had to make a decision. And then technically, if we go like super technically, he had the ability, he definitely had the ability to win the fight, but he was legitimately screwed by a very heavy RNG role. Not only could he have uh, hit another character, 
he possibly could not have crit. I have no idea if his Selene is 100% quit, crit, quit, quit, 100% crit. Most likely she is. But also, you know, everything kind of rolled that way. And then he goes on to lose this fight. And it's a best of one, which is really unfortunate. I really don't think that uh, anything that has like heavy RNG into it, which is a lot of these mobile games, some, some of them are really heavy into it. They shouldn't be a best of one. I feel like that's kind of bad. They, they do it like, a, like some other tournaments where they do it that the early rounds are best of ones and then it becomes best of threes and then eventually it becomes like a best of five sometimes depending on how they how long they want to draw it out but you know with people having to have i think we saw before it's like 10 people eight people so you having to have eight people sit around for a long period of time so it makes sense that they wanted to make it like somewhat quick but in a competitive sense i'm a competitor so like i would prefer to have the most amount of matches to prove that you actually can beat my ass you didn't luck out in one fight and just be like, well, well, you know, I'm better than you. So <laughs> this is my question. I wanted to kind of have the conversation on my own channel because it really kind of made me think that just because the guy won through like pretty much like a fluke, he, he pretty much lucked out really badly, but he planned the luck out. Even though he tried to, he put RNG as much into his favor as possible and he got it correct. Do you guys like that? I, I personally obviously hate it. Like obviously the more RNG that's in a game, I think the worse it gets, it becomes, I know that RNG is for like to feel excited. And like that was very exciting. You saw how excited he got when he got that hit, when he put something really lucky in and he won. Like that's kind of exciting. Like when you get a crit that you don't deserve, when your monster survives, and you thought he was gonna die, but like the games for some reason gave you like, uh, what did they do in Pokemon? It was so stupid. They would they put in systems uh, in the PV uh, E part of it, not when you're actually battling. But Pokemon had the system that your Pokemon survived the hit because it likes you. <laughs> it's like what? What are you doing? Obviously, most people hate it when it happens to them. But is that worth? <laughs> is it worth the person feeling discouraged and pissed that they lost the RNG? If there are more people that I get, not more people, because it's one person benefits, the other person doesn't, but is it worth to have that aspect of it? Like, oh man, maybe I'll luck out like that one day. Uh, like summons are basically the same thing too. Like summoning wouldn't be as thrilling if you were able to guarantee what you wanted every single pull. Now I like, pity banners I, I respect the fact of a pity banner because i will get what i want eventually but i still like the aspect of summoning that it's random like you know that's not, but that's not gameplay like, let's bring seven deadly sins into the room seven deadly sins i actually had a long tangent of seven deadly sins in my last mfo video and i had to take it out but now we're here seven deadly sins rng like when they have status effects and stuff like that they always land unless there's immunity obviously they always land uh, outside of like Pokemon where some stuff does not land, they have percentage and ratios and stuff like that. Epic 7 has effective effectiveness, like your ability to land a debuff plus effective resistance, but sometimes no matter how high or low stuff is, you can still land a debuff, so it's like, pfft, whatever. But then 7 Deadly Sins has it that the debuff lands no matter what, but you have RNG of the card, of a card game pretty much. You technically can have a super setup team, but still lose because you didn't get the cards that you wanted, and that's the whole RNG of cards. Now a card game is obviously built on RNG to a certain extent, but your whole goal of a card game, which is the argument here, is that when you make a deck, I know I think some people used to refer to their, their heroes as a deck and the cards that they have and stuff like that. But when you make a deck, you're trying to eliminate RNG as much as possible. So did Samu, did, isn't this not what Samu Gamer did? He, he made a team comp that gave him the highest percentage to win and then he won even a deck no matter how crappy like i'm playing Yu Gi Oh a lot right now your shout out to my people playing Yu Gi Oh. let me know what is your favorite Yu Gi Oh card from the first series the og series if you were to actually think of it like Yu Gi, like you trim your deck down to make like i said to make the best deck you can but no matter how good you make that deck, you can brick. That's what they call it in um, card games. When you brick, when you just don't draw what you need, you literally just keep drawing crap, and it's like, and shit, and crap. This card is useless. And no matter how good your deck is, the other person's getting half their, like most of the stuff that they need, they're summoning stuff, they're playing what they need, and then you're not getting anything you need, and you lose. And then it's like, well, that felt like crap, but it's a card game. I feel like, again, that's another community that, that may understand this a little bit better than possibly if you were to put this against a fighting game person, a person that plays fighting games. A person that plays fighting games does not want random stuff in their game. They do not want that a person jumped and hit them and it did a billion damage, not a billion, you know, obviously I'm exaggerating, but it did a, a random assortment of damage. Fighting game people like consistency. 
they want that if they hit you with some type of mix-up that it was intentional that they pretty much knew exactly what was going on and if you didn't block it it's because you couldn't block it or you didn't react quick enough so a fighting game player really needs their game to be very consistent dark souls adventure gamers uh, a game uh, adventure gamers i guess action adventure like those people like if you were to play dark souls <laughs> i always thought about how nightmare this is and for my exos heroes people you probably i'm gonna i'm gonna blend in with you guys for a second if i were to play dark souls right and i know that or i should I hit with my axe, right? My axe should do 600 damage. Every time I hit it on a specific spot of this monster, whatever, it should do 600 damage. That's how it's coded. But if it was if it was mobile gamed, that I would swing and then all of a sudden I took the risk of, of trying to get damage and instead of 600 damage, I got 200 because the RNG triggered, some random RNG that triggered that the, the, the person blocked it. The damage was mitigated by something that I have no idea. And it's not like they casted a spell that I visibly saw. It's just they decided, the game just decided that there is a block crit, pretty much. That's what it is, a block. Blocking in, in uh, Exos Heroes drives me nuts. Also, I can also have it in my favor that maybe I swing and then it does a boatload of damage. And it's like, well, I just beat that boss and I, I hit it like five times and I don't know why I won. It's like, oh, because your crit is high. It's like, I guess. <laughs> and to be fair they do have crit i think in dark souls i think in that game and it's like when you parry or when you backstab that you can increase that damage but it's through skill it's through literally you doing something spe very specific and making it work like like i i love that form of gameplay but i do like to delve into the rng -ness sometimes because it's 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 degenerate it's stupid it's like it's funny when you beat someone on some stupid shit so my question to you guys again is, what do you feel like? Do you feel like RNG should not have a home at all in gameplay? Do you want it somewhat in gameplay? Like I said, because I don't want to luck out. I want to, I, I guess like maybe, I don't know. I always want to win and feel like it was my strategic genius. It, you know, got the, the glasses pushed. It was my strategic genius that led me to victory. Like I set this up in a way that was so dramatically into my favor that I won. I won, not, not, not me and the dev won. <laughs> <laughs> me and my homie dev senpai won no i won i figured it out i'm the one that did it i executed it with perfection that's when i used to do my dark souls level one runs because it made me feel like i beat the dev that's why i love uh my dark Souls level one runs i should like get them from my other channel i don't think i have that much footage of it but i love that it was so fun to do a soul level one challenge in dark souls because you literally learned the game to the degree that literally, literally, you have to be perfect. And there is no lucking out, there is no, I hope I, maybe I should start hanging, hitting him here and he won't hit me back. No, you have to learn every move, how long it lasts, the hitboxes, all that stuff. That, that is a, that's fun to me. I, that's the torturous fun that I like to, to get into. Drop those YFOs in the comment section below. And of course, buy the merch, come on, man. You know how many times I gotta tell you guys? But most importantly, guys, like, comment, subscribe, watch all the ads. Thank you guys so much. You guys have no idea the support that you guys have been giving out recently has been ridiculous. And I really, really, really deeply appreciate it. Appreciate all the support that you guys have, especially for this series, just MFOs, when we're just talking about stuff in the gaming industry and it's not specified towards a specific game. So I, I love you guys for that. And, and a lot of people love that we're having these open discussions because it needs to be said. You know, we need to have a forum in which we can discuss what we like and dislike about these games and how we want to, especially when we get one. I promise I'll find one aspect of something that's really cool, and that was Guardian Tales. I, I've been speaking about Guardian Tales. I love Guardian Tales, so you see me talk about it and bring it up a lot more often. And even Guardian Tales, pretty cool stuff. So I'm about to upload a video on that, hopefully today. <laughs> But anyway, one thing that you don't have to worry about that's hopefully today is because that every day at the casino is your lucky day. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.